Greetings, marketing students. Dr. R here. And today I'm going to be talking about emotion analysis, which is part of this week's assignment. So in this module, the focus is on consumer emotion. Uh, the fact that emotional response is such an innate, automatic, powerful influence. And the fact that in spite of being a very intangible attribute of the product experience, the emotions that products evoke do add value for the customer. So it is important to study the emotions that consumers experience when using products. And this right here is an exercise uh, to help us learn how to do that. So this, what we see here are the, is the data associated with a product supported emotion study. And you have some information here about the study. So there was 30 participants and they rated one of three different brands of chocolate ice cream. And the uh, brands were Haagen-Dazs, Breyers, and Ben and & Jerry's. And participants were unaware of the ice cream brand. So this was unbranded ice cream that they were, they were tasting. Uh, the ice cream was served in a simple bowl with no brand information provided. And prior to evaluating how the ice cream sample made them feel, participants ate a water cracker and drank water to cleanse their palates. And the fact that participants responded emotionally to these unbranded foods indicates the supported product emotions. So these are baseline emotions regardless of brand. And uh, you can read more about the concept of supported product emotions versus associated emotions in the Paths to Emotion Assigned article, but these are very important concepts. Here we see the pairs of emotions that they had to rate for the, uh, the ice cream that they were tasting. And these are bipolar descriptors. So in other words, they're opposites. So reliant or independent, vulnerable or secure, uncertain, confident, incapable, powerful, apathetic, passionate, sad, joyful, embarrassed, proud, routine, adventurous, and serious and carefree. Now the scale ranged from negative three to positive three. That should look familiar since that's what we used in the multi-attribute attitude ratings as well. And so a positive score indicates that the person rates the product more strongly on the second descriptor, whereas a negative score indicates that they rated the product more strongly on the first descriptor. So here, the positive two means they felt more independent when tasting this ice cream. Over here, the negative one indicates that the ice cream made them feel more vulnerable. Uh, over here, the zero is right in the middle, so that means that it made them feel neither vulnerable nor secure, so it's a neutral position. And so all of these uh, ratings range between negative three and positive three, all the way down. And so we have 30 data points uh, or 30 cases collected here. So 10 uh, consumers who tasted Haagen-Dazs, 10 who tasted Breyers, and 10 who tasted Ben and & Jerry's and provided their ratings. Now over here is where the analysis will be conducted. And so one of the, uh, uh, this particular example, exercise one has been all worked out for you, but it's important to read the instructions carefully so you can follow along with what was done. Uh, the first step is to compute the average ratings for each emotion separately for each brand. Okay, and so we are going to be using Excel functions and Excel formulas for this, well, mainly Excel functions. And uh, in this case, the data is sorted by brand. Uh, so you don't really have to use um, the average if command, but what it does is it tells Excel that if the name in the, in the brand cell is, in this case, Hagen, because we are computing the average for Hagen-Dazs, then to uh, for the values that correspond to Haagen-Dazs, use those to compute the average rating for that particular emotion. And why this is important is because here in exercise uh, two, which is the one that you'll be working out, the data are not in order. And so you need to uh, tell the program 
that it needs to compute the average just using the values for the particular brand that you are interested in uh, computing an average for for each per each emotion rating. Okay, so the the uh, here are the average emotion ratings per brand. All right, and we have decimals because these are averages, uh, so everything's divided by ten. And then we see a graph of these emotion ratings over here. So this is useful to provide you with a visual of what the high points and the low points are within each brand for the uh, different emotions and between brands. You can sort of compare. We can see here that uh, Haagen-Dazs tends to be rated higher than Breyers and Ben and & Jerry's on reliance and independence. So that means that it's considered more independent. Uh, over here, Ben & Jerry's is rated more joyful than the other two brands. Uh, and in fact, the Breyers brand is really low here. So it's very considered much sadder than the other two brands. Uh, so that might be something to consider whether that's um, you know something we might want to change via some marketing communications. And over here, same thing, we see differences uh, between the brands. Now, this is just for visualization, but this doesn't tell us whether these are real differences or whether the difference is just sort of random uh, due to, uh, to chance. So for that, we use statistics and probability, and uh, that would require checking to see, running a statistical analysis to see whether the difference that we observe between brands on these different emotions is a real difference, if it's a true difference. Now this table, table two, uh, computes the, uh, the difference in means or averages between each pair of brands that we are comparing. So here we're comparing Haagen-Dazs with Breyers, Haagen-Dazs with B, uh, Ben and & Jerry, and Breyers and Ben and & Jerry. Okay, so this is a very simple uh, formula right here, just subtracting one from the other. Okay, and so in this case, a, a positive number indicates that uh, Haagen-Dazs is rated more uh, highly in the positive emotion on, on independence. Uh, both against Breyer and against Ben and Jerry. However, when comparing Breyers with Ben and Jerry, the uh, Breyers brand rates a little bit more toward the uh, the negative emotion, so it's rated as more uh, reliant. And then uh, over here is where we do our statistical analysis. So this is an A-B test. And we're going to be using the t-test for this. So we're, we're, we're testing the difference between two, um, two brands uh, to test whether the differences in emotion ratings between these brands that we're comparing is statistically significant. In other words, a difference that's not just due to chance. So we'll be using the t-test Excel function, which is built into every Excel program. And there's three parameters that we specify when using this function the data arrays, which means the, uh, the cells containing the emotion data that we're going to be comparing for brand one and brand two. The number of tails in the distribution for the test we'll be conducting. So this is a non-directional two-tailed test. And the t-test type, whether it's an independent samples test, which is type two, or a paired samples test, which is type one. Uh, the first uh, well, the t-test here has been uh, done for you. So we are using a two-tailed test because we do not have any reason to predict that emotion ratings will be stronger for brand one or brand two. If we did have a specific prediction and we're expecting uh, one of the brands to be more rated more highly in joyfulness than, than, than the first brand, then we would use a one-tailed test because we have a specific direction that we expect the difference to be. But here, that's not the case. We're just testing to see which ones are different. We don't know um, who's going to be um, rated more highly on, on which emotion. In, uh, and then regarding the, the second parameter of the type of test, uh, in an independent samples t-test, different consumers uh, rate different brands. 
And so the response given for uh, emotions for any given brand is independent of all other ratings. So if, this, uh, if the same person rated their emotions for two or three brands, then these responses are related to each other because it's the same person experiencing it. They're having their sensory experience. Uh, so we would conduct a paired t-test. Uh, however, if you have different people uh, rating haagen and then different people rating Briars and different people rating Ben & Jerry, it's an independent samples t-test. All right, and so here the t-test has been uh, conducted, so the information is already plugged in. Uh, if you're wondering about these dollar signs, this is an incredibly important uh, aspect or element of uh, Excel functions. It basically sets it up to where the either the column or the row is fixed. Uh, where, you know, if you drag this, this particular formula across, uh, typically uh, everything here would shift over one. Uh, but here I'm telling it that it should um, keep everything in the same row, but only the column will change. So for example, here it's column C, whereas over here it's column D, but it's the same rows. Okay, so you can quote, run a quick Google search and, and find out more about that, but that's very uh, useful in uh, using Excel. All right, so here we have the different t-tests. Now, uh, the, the, what's provided here is the p-value, the probability, uh, to conclude whether the difference in average emotion ratings for each given emotion is statistically significant for the pair of comparison brands. Uh, the traditional scientific standard against which p-values are evaluated is 0.05. This represents a 5% alpha, which means that there is a 5% probability of rejecting the null hypothesis that there's no significant difference between the emotion ratings, when in fact it is true that the two, uh, that the two differ from each other. If the p-value is at or lower than 0.05, you reject the null hypothesis and conclude that the two average emotion ratings really do differ from each other. All right, and so you would put the decision no for not significantly different, yes for significantly different. Again, we, I'm using an Excel function here so that it automatically uh, gives me whether it is or it is not significant using the if function. So if this cell, uh, Oops, sorry. If the value in this cell is less than, and I put 0.055 because it's anything lower, you know, in a decimal, you can be stricter with this and make it a strict 0.05. Um, but, you know, just being a little bit conservative here for, for the sake of illustration. And then what to put if this is true and what to put if it's false. So the yes or the no. And so this provides the, the information for me. And so I can look at this quickly and see which differences are real. So the difference between Hagen and Breyers on these two are true differences, uh, you know, as far as statistical probability. Uh, in terms of vulnerability and secure, none of the differences are, are true differences. So even this one that's, a, you know, 1.2 points away, uh, that's just, you know, kind of random. Uh, here, no, no, no. Over here, apathetic and passionate. There's two differences that are real, the haagen versus Briars and the Briars versus uh, Ben & Jerry. Uh, same thing under sad and joyful. All of the differences are real. Under embarrassed and proud, none. Under routine and adventurous, all of them are, are real differences. And then none under serious and carefree. So this kind of tells me uh, what differentiates the brands from each other and uh, could provide a basis for a marketing communications campaign to position the brand a certain way that, you know, given the, the emotions that it evokes, if these are positive emotions, uh, and we can find segments of consumers that, that want that experience. And then again, we can confer with the map, uh, the emotion map or EMAP over here and, uh, you know, see visualize these uh these differences so you know under routine and adventurous the uh the differences are all significant so we look over here routine and adventurous and we see 
you know, just visually which brand is the highest, which one's in the middle, which one's the lowest, and, uh, and so forth. 